Today we are making rhubarb dreamers and it is a family recipe that is super duper good. Even if you think you don't really like rhubarb, you've got to give it a try. Just last week I made this pan and two people I turned and converted into rhubarb lovers. So I highly, highly suggest trying it. At the base of it is a shortbread then on top of it is going to be your rhubarb and it gets bubbly and yummy and you cool it down and you just cut that into your pieces. Mm. Perfect. So I am Dina. I am from Casmer Limited. We make divinely inspired products. We make products for your body, your soles, your lips and your nails. So join me today and I will show you how to make these beautiful, rhubarb dream bars. I'm going to take you to my garden where I have my rhubarb which was given to me from my mother which was given to her from her mother so it's my grandma's rhubarb and it's just such an awesome plant and then along the way it's my boy's birthday so that is what today's celebration is going to be for. I'm going to introduce you to him as the day goes on, our video goes on. So, see you soon. I'm gonna show you how to make these bars. I like to just put the butter in to the two cups of flour and three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar. This is one cup of butter. So that is two sticks. I do not have one of those cool blending tools to use, so I do this with a fork. It does get the job done. Maybe not quite as quickly, but it does get the job done, which is all you that matters when you're making these beautiful bars. You want to get your consistency of your shortbread to be crumbly. So it takes a little bit of time to work that through and get that butter just mashed in there. But it's looking really good. So then you take that, you got your prepared pan, and in it goes. And you're going to just move this around And get it all nicely flattened and beautifully spread out in this pan. And then you flatten it in. And it looks like beautiful white, awesome sand. So we have always grown up with rhubarb. When we were kids, my, we would go see my grandma and grandpa on their farm. We were always invited into their garden. And my, my grandma would sit there and she'd bring a stool out, <laughs> sit in her garden and do her work. And she would peel and cut and weed and whatever had to be done. But us kids, I think probably to keep us quiet, she would crack off a piece of the stalks of rhubarb and give that to us. And we were able to just eat that. It was so tart and sour and just, it was awesome. And my grandma was one who believed in sugar is always better. So you could take that stalk of rhubarb and you could take a bite and she let you dip it into sugar. And then every bite, she did not mind double dipping. She did not mind at all. She was a wonderful grandma. <laughs> And we just would have our sugar and our beautiful rhubarb and all. Oh, I've loved it since I was a little kid. And then it is ready for the oven. Well, we made it out to the rhubarb patch. So this is my rhubarb that my mother gave me, that her mother gave her. So this is my grandma's rhubarb and it has made it all the way to my home from Wisconsin.
and every year it gets better and better. This year though, I was not sure I was even going to be lucky enough to have my plant back. We had to have some work done in our yard last year and I was able to to have rhubarb in spring but then our our work started in the summertime last year and it was a disaster. Came back so it is a faithful strong spirited plant that if you have an opportunity to have a place to grow it I highly suggest it. It's easy, it's colorful, and it's oh so yummy, especially when you use it in your baking. So anybody that would like to subscribe to more videos or share this video because they know somebody who loves making rhubarb or would like to like this video or comment, I would love to hear any comments. So my plant, my poor plant, has been going through a really super hard time. But, and I don't know if it's because of it, um, with how the work was done last year, I'm not quite sure. But I have blemishes on it, and it just looks like it has a little bit of stuff. And some of my leaves are beautiful, and other, other leaves are not the same. They, they look like they have had a little something. So how you do your rhubarb when you've grown your beautiful patch, you're out and you're able to pick some, you take your garden shears and I'm taking this one. This is a beautiful piece. You cut it low. Once you cut it low and you cut the leaf off. And I always take my leaves and put them in a pile. And once my leaves are in a pile, I just throw them into the garbage can. This is the actual piece that you are going to use for your baking. And sometimes with rhubarb, I know people worry about, should I eat the skin? Should I not eat the skin? Me personally, I love it. I will eat it for sure. But sometimes you get the pieces that just, that you need to just pull off. And if, I always pull those off. I never, if there's a piece that needs to pull off, I just pull it off and that's it. And this is it. So now I've got my collection of rhubarb from the garden in the house. We're gonna chop that up and we're gonna get we'll continue with our rhubarb bean bars. So come on, let's go back into the kitchen. Okay, so while the shortbread is baking in the oven, 350 degrees, I'd say check it, 9 by 13 pan, check it at about 20 minutes. You want it to be um, just lightly browned. Might need a couple minutes more, but check it at 20 minutes. So then your next part, while that's done, you're going to be slicing your rhubarb. You need four cups to be able to fold into your, your mixture. So the mixture is four eggs, two cups of sugar, cup of flour and a half teaspoon of salt and then along with your your rhubarb so easy you don't need a mixer or anything like that you just need your good old-fashioned still my fork and my good pan looks really nice and then you fold in fold in your beautiful rhubarb and it smells super good. It's really tart and, and happy. It's got a happy, happy taste and smell to it. Then just fold that in. And as soon as your shortbread comes out, you're going to just put this right over the top. So stay tuned, it's coming up. beautiful. So there she is, fresh out of the oven, hot and happy. Move this out of the way a little bit. I'll set it right here. And then we got our beautiful folded in 
rhubarb, eggs, sugar, flour, and a pinch of salt. And that's it. And then we're going to spread this right over our hot Oh boy, I gotta tell you, the shortbread smells so good. Being that this is being made for my son, he just came in. He was smelling it. He could smell it. Of course, I have a big spatula. All right. And he said, Ooh, I can't wait for those rhubarb dream bars. So that's coming up and this one the second phase here once you get that all painted across the top you're going to bake this for about 40 45 minutes and um, that's it that's all you have to do to make people love suggested. Off it goes back in the oven. Well, it's out of the oven and it's cooled. So it took about 43 minutes. So 40 to 45 minutes. Give it a look. This is what it's going to look like when it's finished. Rhubarb dream bars. This is it. I'm going to cut these up and I'm going to go surprise my birthday boy. And We'll catch him over with a little dream bar and wish him a happy birthday. Oh, so perfect. The ball and the heels. Some peppermint football on those heels and feet after a hard day's work and a piece of birthday rhubarb dream, dream bar. Thank you so much. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Cheers. May all your wishes come true. Beautiful. I can't wait to try it. Grandma Sketcher, she'd be so proud of us. <laughs> I'm so proud. This is awesome. Oh my gosh. Those that are so, is so good. good. <laughs> it tastes like a dream bar. <laughs> wow. That is so good. Delicious. How could you not like rhubarb after this? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Perfecto. It really is so. <laughs> 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 